I got a patron request from Micah to review Tick Tick Boom. This is a movie musical released by Netflix and the film directing debut of Lin-Manuel Miranda. It's a depiction of the life of Jonathan Larson, the creator of the musical Rent and based on his one-man show. I thought this was a really well-made movie, which is largely a credit to the talent involved and how they were able to portray Larson's story prior to hitting it big with Rent and before his tragic death in 1996. What the movie does particularly well is making Larson into someone relatable as he tries to put together this show. I think all of us have this drive to be creative and prove ourselves of our work, regardless of the field we're in. Tick Tick Boom shows the incredible amount of hard work and stress Larson went through as he developed this science fiction rock musical. The film depicts the usual artistic struggles like writer's block, while also showing other aspects and conflicts that get in his way. I've seen a few comments describe Larson as unlikable, which I disagree with. He certainly has his flaws, and in a few scenes he does not treat his friends the best. However, I think the filmmakers managed to find that right balance and make him sympathetic. I actually found myself a little frustrated at times when watching the movie, because I wanted so much for someone to give him a chance, as he's clearly talented and passionate and has the makings of being the next great musical songwriter and showman. We obviously know that Rent will become a big deal later on, but I still felt bad for him as he struggled his way to the top. I actually think that sympathetic element can also be credited to Lin-Manuel Miranda, and how he likely related to Jonathan Larson. Miranda also spent years tinkering with his first musical, In the Heights, and much like Larson, Stephen Sondheim was one of his mentors. Miranda's direction is a key element of the film's success, as he takes advantage of the filmmaking form in crafting this musical. He incorporates a lot of visual flourishes and techniques, but never in a way that feels distracting or in your face. It truly feels like we're being driven right into Larson's imagination, and what he sees when he has these songs swirling around in his head. Miranda, along with screenwriter Stephen Levinson, handled the tonal shifts well, along with the integration of the musical numbers. The film keeps its energy up throughout, which is not too surprising, considering Miranda's early work, which is known for being very energetic. There's a solid mix of performances, ranging from dance-heavy to ones that mainly show Larson at the piano. One standout scene is Sunday, a fantasy sequence set at the diner Larson works at, and featuring cameos from multiple stage musical veterans. I admit I did not recognize everyone, but it must have been a thrill for people who are familiar with every single original cast member of these famous shows. Listening to the songs, they definitely have that Rent sound to them, and all of them do the job of either being humorous or emotional or dramatic. What's interesting is that even though you might expect the movie to drop a lot of hints about how he would create Rent in the future, the filmmaker is able to be subtle. While there are a number of references to his other work, the movie is not constantly winking at the camera going, oh. Here's where he came up with that idea for Rent. I actually predicted a lot more nods to his most famous production, but Miranda and Levinson restrained themselves. Andrew Garfield gives a great performance, capturing his struggles and his various emotions. He handles Larson's complexities really well and successfully portrays his arc throughout the film. Garfield has been nominated for an Oscar for this performance, and I think it's absolutely deserving. I was also impressed with Robin DeJesus, who plays Larson's best friend, Michael. Him and Garfield play off each other well, and he's able to show Michael's own inner conflicts and his own decision to abandon acting for a real job. Tick Tick Boom has also received an Oscar nomination for Best Film Editing, and I can certainly see why. This could not have been an easy movie to edit, as it had to place the fantasy musical sequences on top of the real-world scenes on top of the scenes of Larson performing his one-man show. Myron Kirstein and Andrew Weisblum pulled off, though, thus allowing the movie to seamlessly flow from one scene to the next. In the end, I thought Tick Tick Boom succeeded as a biographical telling of Jonathan Larson's story and an impressive directing debut for Lin-Manuel Miranda. I certainly look forward to seeing what he directs in the future. Give Tick Tick Boom a watch on Netflix, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for the request, Micah.